Let's try a thought experiment here. What makes a Google Pixel a Google Pixel? The easy answer is software. I mean, these things get early access to Google's latest versions of Android. And the company even says that if you buy one of these phones, you'll get updates for three years from the moment that device hits the Play Store. That's pretty nice. In recent years, it's also really become about the cameras. With the Pixels, maybe more so than with any other smartphone we've tested, it's the device you go to when you want to take effortlessly excellent looking shots. That to me is the soul of the Pixel experience now. And I have to say, the new Pixel 3a XL, which we've been testing for a little while now, embodies all that and then some. And I would actually even go as far as to say, this is the version of the Pixel 3 Google should have made in the first place. No, it's not technically as powerful as the version we got last year, but what it adds in terms of creature comforts and general polish actually make a really big difference. You'd be hard pressed to tell these things apart just by looking at them, but there are a few key differences we'll run through right now, and they're mostly because Google needed to save some money. The body, instead of being made of this nice matte and glossy glass, is made of polycarbonate. But you still get that same look around the back, you still get that little pop of color around the power button, and it does actually feel really quite nice. It's a little bit chintzier in some ways compared to last year's Pixel 3s, but I don't think anyone's really going to tell the difference. The screen is a little different too, especially if you're looking at the XL like we have. Last year's Pixel 3 XL had a 6.3 inch notched smartphone display. The 3A XL instead has a notchless six inch display, which isn't quite as pixel dense. It only runs at 2160 by 1080, but it's more than enough for what I've been using it for, which is mostly just taking photos and scrolling through apps and websites. The stereo speakers aren't front facing anymore. You have one that serves as the earpiece and then another down at the bottom of the phone next to the USB-C port. But yeah, this very much looks like what you're used to. And that's frankly kind of nice. I will say, Considering some of the hardware issues we've run into after reviewing the Pixel 3s last year, the design was probably one of the best things the Pixel 3 line had going for it. So at least that stays the same. Oh, and actually, this phone also has a headphone jack, which is one of those things that you don't really know that you're going to miss until it's back again. And I've been using this thing as my primary music machine since I got it last week. I can't say it's a game changer because it's basically hearkening back to the way the game used to be played in the first place, but. I'm never gonna say no to this, and frankly, I think a lot of you are gonna be pretty pleased by that too. Most of the real changes happen under the hood though, and I think in large part, they're for the better. Now, as I said earlier, this is not quite as powerful as the Pixel 3. That's mostly because we have a Snapdragon 670 chipset in both the 3A and the 3A XL. There were some rumors that the XL would get an improved Snapdragon 710 chipset, but Google has always tried to keep the performance levels consistent between both versions, both sizes of the Pixels, and that actually is the case here. I have to eat a little bit of crow because I did buy into those rumors when they were making the rounds. Now, this does mean that launching apps takes ever so slightly longer and sifting through your content and scrolling up and down and really just kind of using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis feels minutely slower. It's not gonna be quite as good at gaming as last year's Pixels with its Snapdragon 845 chipset, but for day-to-day -day use, it's actually more than enough. And when you consider the fact that the Pixel 3a XL starts at $480, I think that's a pretty easy compromise to live with. You're not gonna be dealing with dramatically reduced performance. It does just work in the way that you sort of expect out of a Pixel, but the price tag makes it so much more palatable. One of my biggest issues with last year's Pixel 3 XL was the battery life. There was a 3430 milliamp hour battery inside, which was okay at best. After a while, it just sort of got to the point where I really couldn't rely on it for a full day's use. And that, more than anything, turned me off of that device and pushed me into the arms of several other smartphones. For now, at least, that problem appears to have been fixed. The Pixel 3a XL has a 3700 milliamp hour battery. And when you couple that with the power sipping tendencies of this less powerful chipset, you're actually getting significantly better battery life. In general, this improved battery has gotten me between five and six hours of screen on time consistently. And that's much better than the three to four that I typically got out of the Pixel 3 XL. It's a game changer, especially if you decided to skip out on the Pixel 3 line altogether because of the hardware issues people seem to consistently have. 
as I've said before, the core stuff, the stuff that really makes a Pixel the Pixel is all really well accounted for here. So it does run the latest version of Android 9 Pro Pi with all of the Pixel features that you've come to know and appreciate now. And the camera around back is the exact same 12 megapixel Sony sensor that we got in the original Pixel 3. So you're paying a fraction of what Google wanted for the Pixel 3s last year, but you're getting a camera that's every bit as good. That to me is the biggest draw here. You get to pay on the low end for an XL about $500 and get seriously what is still one of the best smartphone cameras on the market. There are, I should say, more flexible options. The Galaxy S10 is a really great triple camera option and the Huawei P30 Pro, if you're in a country that doesn't hate Huawei, actually might be the most flexible camera out there in a smartphone right now. But when it comes to being out in the world and just knowing that you're gonna get a really, really good photo, I would put the Pixel 3a up there with just about anything else on the market right now. I will say after running into considerable issues with my Pixel 3 XL last year, a fact I know a lot of you out there watching this have run into as well, I have to hope that Google has learned something from those issues and put them into practice in the 3A XL. There are some very good decisions being made here. The camera is just as good as it used to be, the battery life is significantly improved, and I think the trade-off in performance is well worth the price you pay for this device. I wouldn't call this device a through and through game changer. And if you already have a Pixel 3 of some kind, you can obviously just kind of skip this mid-range offshoot entirely. But if you skipped out on last year's Pixel 3 because of what you heard about them, I have to hope that this fills that gap really nicely. I think this really means interesting things for Google's smartphone strategy going forward. As you probably know, Google likes to release new flagship Pixel phones later in the year, and if they start doing these mid-range releases earlier in the year too, that could mean Google is looking at a much bigger slice of the market that they can address, which is nice because, as you may have heard, Google's Pixel 3s have not been selling particularly well at all compared to the Google Pixel 2s. That's gotta be a blow when you're in the smartphone making business, as Google has decided it wants to be. So by stretching things out and by having two different parts of the market addressed by smartphones that, at least in the case of the Pixel 3a, really seem to deliver on their promise at a price point that's very reasonable, this could be a very good thing for Google moving forward. We're gonna keep testing this phone to really get a feel for what it's capable of, but at this point, after a bit of testing, I'm very cautiously optimistic that the 3a is the Pixel most people right now should actually buy.